And they're gorgeous. They've got some USs for us. Well done. Um, let's see. The topic is changing jobs. Um, should you, should you not? To what extent do you agree or disagree? Let's see what you had to say about this. Okay. In a society, there are, here we go, a variety, you're missing an A here, a variety of members uh, having multiple views that a long-term employment, that long-term employment without the A, can be better or worse for their lives. Okay, this doesn't really make sense. Because what you're telling me is that there are numerous members with numerous views that it can be better or worse. So it's just, just stick to one view, okay? So what you could have said instead is, um, in a society, there are um, uh, a variety of views regarding um, the, let's see, the benefits um, of long-term employment. You could say something like that. Um, lots of, lots, you're missing an S here. Lots of individuals in today's world prefer to switch profession, to be diversified in their career path and avoid, let's see, any, there it is, roadblocks to making a living. This needs to be two. Uh, this essay, the essay will help demonstrate that moving to a newer work position can be beneficial according to some persons, but unsuitable as per others with the help of examples and supporting arguments. Okay, yeah, but what does it ask us? To what extent do you agree or disagree? So this isn't one of those um, discuss both views essays. Um, you need to actually take a position here. So um, you need to say, like, look at this. You see, never you never take a personal stance. So you say, according to some persons, and then you say, as per other individuals. Yeah, but you never tell us your view, and that's what the question is asking for you, so you absolutely have to make sure that you address that, okay? Alrighty, so on the one hand, uh, employees, not the employees, you're not talking about a specific group, you're talking about employees on the whole in general. So, um, on the one hand, employees tend, singular, uh, you need a simple present here, tend to feel stagnant towards current employer and well let's see or tend to feel stagnant towards them no you don't feel stagnant towards somebody you you feel stagnant in their position i think this is what you really mean to say so they tend to feel stagnant in their position uh, once they are there for a while okay and would like to grow in terms of knowledge acquisition as well as salary. You want to talk about theoretically here, so you use would instead. This is because, with no comma, a huge number of organizations um, have been non-progressive with the upcoming techniques in the projects or will like to earn a majority of profit by providing rudimentary services for the customers. All right, I'm not really sure what this means. The syntax is all wrong. The words are wrong. I'm not really sure what you're trying to say. Um, what does this mean, upcoming techniques in the projects? First of all, you don't mean the projects because we're not talking about a specific group of projects. And I don't understand this expression. Um, and I don't understand what you mean by rudimentary services. I, I mean, it's very vague to me and I'm not really understanding what you're trying to say. And I don't understand how either of these, I don't understand how, what either of these have to do with um, employees feeling stagnant in their jobs. Okay, so moving on. Not only has it reduced, with a D, enthusiasm in the workforce, but it has, it has also deteriorated their cognitive abilities. All right, well, tell me how. Where did you say that? Okay. Maybe I can understand this, the, the, the enthusiasm thing because you talked about them feeling stagnant, but what about their cognitive abilities? So that doesn't, I'm not really clear where this is coming in, okay? You need to back it up or, or explain it a little further. Thus, it can be seen that employees prefer a newer work, work environment which can satisfy the responsibilities, greed for knowledge. I still don't know what this means either. Um, 
I think you mean which can satisfy the hunger for knowledge. This is a more acceptable phrase. Okay, so moving on. Um, however, there's a, there is a certain amount of people, or you could have just said there are certain people, even better, rather than amount of people. So there are certain people who prefer their current company due to various reasons, such as fringe benefits, goal less career, I don't know what that means, and adjustment to the current environment. I also don't know what you mean by adjustment to current environment. Rather than giving me an explanation for this right away, what you could do is explain what you mean when you use these terms. First of all, there are three very different terms, fringe benefits, I don't even know what this means, and then there are three different things, so you could explain um, what those things are, and then you can explain why they feel this way. So, um, a plausible explanation for this is people having various responsibilities uh, in their households, I think that's what you mean here, in their households, like running errands, which can be done in the day, and who will work in the graveyard shift? Um, I'm not sure what that means. What, what, people having various responsibilities of household, like running errands, which can be done in the day, and working, and I, I don't understand who is working in the graveyard shift here, and how this is really relevant, okay? Um, I'm a little confused about the development of this paragraph so far. All right, so an empirical, not an empirical research, because research is uncountable, we don't use an. So empirical research has shown that around 62% who stay, no S, in the same employment is because of various perks and benefits such as comfortable timings. I don't know what you mean by timings. You mean comfortable schedule, like schedule, comfortable work schedule? Um, okay, bonuses and even insurance benefits, among others, provided by the companies. Therefore, an individual can prefer to stay in his current profession rather than handing out resignation every now and then. Handing out a resignation. To conclude, although the employees can be satisfied with their current job, it tends, you can't have both but and although, so you have to pick one or the other. Let's get rid of but, so that it tends to be detrimental to the career in I think you mean in the long term, not the comprehensive life. Furthermore, as stated by a great scholar, nothing is permanent. Hence, it seems to be beneficial for the employee to change the employer in due course. Okay. Um, all right, so I'm going to be really honest with you about this, Gaurav. Uh, the development of this was a little confusing, um, quite a bit confusing in both body paragraphs. Um, I didn't know where you were going with it. Your support um, really kind of problematic. Um, I can't really say that it was a very coherent or cohesive essay. Um, there were a lot of word errors, a lot of syntax errors. Um, so it does need some revision, really. I mean, I've pointed out to you all the places what I had where I had difficulty understanding, so um, I'd like you to revise it. Also, don't forget that you never actually answered the question. You never said what your position about this was, uh, what stance you take. You simply argued both sides, and for me, as a reader, it wasn't clear where your position came into this, okay? Alrighty, so let's go on to your uh, task one. It's the English and Homestay, okay? Dear David, I am writing this letter to introduce myself and inquire about some queries related to travel and clothing during my stay. Now, you've rushed just into it, and I don't want you to do that. I want you to first, it's as if you know David, like, your whole life. So, I want you to um, start by saying, um, I am writing regarding um, my upcoming visit to your home with the English and Homestay program, Okay. You, the first thing you always do in these letters is explain why you're writing, okay? Um, you went straight into the travel and clothing. I didn't want you to do that. I wanted you to say uh, some questions I have regarding my travel, my, what is it called? English and homestay, okay? Okay, so since you're introducing yourself, you could say your name. All right, let's see, what does it say here? Uh, John Davis. Okay, so 
My name is John Davis, and I live, uh, not I am living, I live with my parents, well, you could say I'm living, but it kind of means that it's temporary. I live with my parents' brother and my wife in India. I am a college postgraduate student in medicine from this university in India, and worked in my hometown for about four years. During my work experience, I had a desire to learn more about medicine from the UK, the due to their advancement in the respective field. This requires a higher level of English, hence, comma, don't forget your commas, I decided to join the English and Home State program. All right, that part's fine. There are some general queries related to London, as I am new to the place, no plural here, um, which can make, which can help make, no, let me try that again, which can help me make my stay easier. Okay, fine. I would like to know okay this is considered more polite language i would like to know how cold the temperature gets and what type of clothing uh would be better not should would be better for my stay the other query is what uh what is the easily and moderate call on cost available mode uh of transport from airport to the home all right let's clean that up a little bit the the grammar is a little off so let's see the other query is regarding uh, transport from the airport to your home. And then you can put a semicolon there. Uh, which mode of transport would you recommend as the um, least costly? You could say that, okay? Or there are other ways you could say it as well. Or uh, what would be a moderate cost way of uh, reaching your home? That's another way. There are tons of ways you could say this. Okay, and last paragraph, although I'm flying from my home city on 31st of August, I will arrive by uh, 2nd of September in London as I'm meeting my friend in Dubai and we'll stay for a day over there. My arrival details for your reference are as follows. Okay, you could have put a colon here. You should have put a colon here. Okay, okay, okay. Waiting for your reply. Please let me know if you have any queries for me. Now, you finished your letter yours faithfully, but you shouldn't because you started Dear David. So that means, number one, you know the name of the person. Therefore, you're not going to put yours faithfully. Uh, second of all, um, you, so you put it, should have put yours sincerely. That's the first thing. Instead of yours faithfully. Yours faithfully we use in a formal letter when we do not know the name of the person we are writing. Um, which brings me to my other issue about this. It's not really clear what tone you're using. Is this a formal letter or is this an informal letter? You start calling him David. Um, some of the language is kind of formal, but some of it is so-so. Um, even calling him David just made me feel like it was a little informal. Um, typically, because you're writing to a person you've never met before, I believe that the idea behind this is to make it formal. Um, which you didn't. It was kind of so-so. It was, yeah, it, you know why? Because here, I mean, you had a lot of direct questions. Not a lot, but you had a couple of direct questions. Anyway, um, there were some nice elements to the letter, um, but there are some things, again, like I said before, that I want you to fix. So correct them, send them back, write your next essays. We'll be here and we'll be waiting, okay? So good luck with your uh, writing.